So you might think that when you put your money in a bank, they take your money and they put it in the vault and they keep it safe until you come back for it. But that's not true at all. And so to talk about compound interest, we really need to talk about what banks do. And to do that, we're going to do a little bit of a history lesson. All right, so this is your house and this is someone else's house. And it's obviously uh, a little bigger and a little more secure than your house is. Way back in the day, your house probably didn't have a lock on it. This one's probably got a moat around it and like a fire breathing dragon or something. Now let's think about who you are. You're a baker, let's say. But you're like the best baker in town and everyone knows it. Everyone goes to your bakery, maybe you've got multiple bakeries, you're baking some fantastic bread and everyone knows that you must be making a lot of money. Now obviously this is a good situation to find yourself in, but it's also a dangerous situation to find yourself in because you've got a lot of money, you've got a house without a lock on it, and there's probably a bunch of bad people that want to take that money away from you. Now, luckily there is a handy solution to this problem, and that is, say, this rich guy. And the rich guy has a house with a lock in it and a moat and a dragon, and he says, I'll look after your money for you. But in return, you're going to have to give me a little bit. So we take all of this money and we take, um, say, this much of that money and we put it in the bank and then the last little bit um, he gets to keep. All right, so this goes in the vault and it sits in the vault nice and safe, surrounded by the moat, guarded by the dragon, and you do that. Right, this means that you lose a little bit of money, uh, but a bunch of money is also safe from these bad people who are trying to take it away. Now, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense because a bank paying compound interest, this isn't the bank paying you, this is you paying the bank for security. So how did we get uh, to a point where the bank pays you instead? Well, for that we need another rich guy. Now, this rich guy makes you a proposition. He says, look, stop putting your money in this rich guy's thing who's charging you money, and instead Put your money in my safe moat dragon place and I'll keep it safe from the bad guys. And not only will I keep it safe from the bad guys, but I'll also pay you a little bit of extra money as well. So you take all of the money out of here and you put it here. And not only does your four dollar signs move from here to the vault nice and safe, but also the rich guy, true to his word, adds in one of his own extra dollar signs. So now you have five dollar signs, not four dollar signs. You're, the rich guy's giving you money to keep your money safe. Why is he doing that? Well, you think that the money is sitting in the vault, but it's not sitting in the vault. There happens to be another person in town who desperately wants to become a butcher, but they've got no money to open up a butcher shop. So what do they do? They ask Rich Guy 2 for a loan. And Rich Guy 2 says, yeah, no worries, I've got plenty of money. I'll give you some money, but when I give you that money, you're going to have to give it back to me eventually, plus an extra dollar sign. So then Rich Guy 2 takes the money that you're, he's keeping safe for you and gives it to the butcher. And now the butcher has your dollar signs. And so you might be thinking to yourself, wait, my money's not very safe here, is it? Because... Rich guy too is not keeping it in his vault, he's handing it off to other people. Now, he's handing it off to other people because once he gets his butcher shop up and running, he's going to start repaying that loan with an extra dollar sign. And the extra dollar sign is going to end up in that vault as well. Now, rich guy too understands that you are keeping your money safe and you might come back for it eventually or you might come back for small parts of it, but you're not going to pull all of it out at once. So... He doesn't have to keep all of your money in the vault. And if he's lending, if he's keeping 10 people's money safe, he doesn't need to keep all 10 people's money safe because the probability is that only one or two of them at any given time are going to want it back. All right, so this is a pretty good business model because when we break it down, it looks like this. You have money that you put into the rich guy's bank. The rich guy takes that money and gives it to the butcher. Once the butcher has a good business and he's making some money, he gives that money back to the rich guy plus a little bit of extra interest. Now, notice that he gave them the four original dollar signs back plus two more. Now, the rich guy is now, let's say you come along and you say, actually, I want all my money back, please. 
The rich guy says, yeah, no worries. You can have the original $4 signs that you gave me, plus one extra one. That's the interest that you get. And now everyone's happy. You had $4 signs, and now you have $5 signs. Rich guy started with, like, $0 signs, even though he's rich, and he's gotten an extra one. And this guy got a loan, and while he doesn't have any dollar signs floating under him, he does have a thriving butcher shop that is starting to make dollar signs. Fantastic. So, why do banks pay compound interest? Because they're not sitting on your money like a dragon. They're taking your money, they're giving it to people, charging them interest, that money comes back into the bank, and then they give you a little bit of interest because you've been nice enough to choose this rich guy instead of that other rich guy. And that's pretty much how a bank works. Now, obviously, this is a bit of a simplification, but this is essentially how it works, and this was the birth of banking. Keeping people's money safe, lending it to people, getting some interest, and then giving that money back and keeping a little bit for yourself. Okay, that's why banks pay compound interest, and we're just getting started on learning all about how compound interest works.